Now look at this. What's up about penguins? So we're going to look at question two on the 2023 AP Bio exam. So you have access to all these questions on AP Central, so I'm going to go ahead and just jump right into it. So first question asks us to describe the role of the intermitochondrial membrane in cellular respiration. So the intermembrane is the cristae, and so we know that the cristae is where we're going to see the electron transport chain. Um, and so the role of it could be talking about that is the site of where the electron transport chain happens, where we see the protons moving across the gradient, um, and that's how we're going to form that proton gradient. You could maybe also bring in the fact that ATP synthase is in that uh, membrane, and that that's how we're going to synthesize ATP. Um, so this could go a lot of different ways. So they give you this data. I'm showing you the mitochondrial amounts at normal as well as at elevated conditions. And so you were supposed to create a graph. So as we can see, there are six different species. Um, so they're not really connected. There's no linear scale. So this would be some type of bar graph. So this is the bar graph I made. Um, I know it looks different than the graph you probably saw on the exam because of the fact that they don't release the graph paper. So I used my own graph paper. So I knew that it was a zero through three already made for you, but everything else I had to add myself. So you're gonna have a bar for each of your species as well as you'll have a normal and an elevated, and then you have your error bars on there. Um, some students have asked about modified bar graphs. I assume a modified bar graph would be okay for this, um, but a line graph would not be okay. So it tells us to determine which species shows a difference in the number of mitochondria in normal and elevated. Um, none of these error bars overlap. So I said they all show a statistically significant difference, which just doesn't feel good in the soul. Um, but that's what the data says, so that's what I'm going with. So describe the relationship between the level of carbon dioxide and the average number of mitochondria per unit cell. A higher amount of carbon dioxide, an elevated amount of carbon dioxide, leads to a higher average number of mitochondria per unit, so it's a direct relationship. So we found out there was a mutation in mitochondrial DNA, and it causes white strips on the leaves. Um, and so they want to know the inheritance of if we cross the pollen from a white strip leaf, so the male, um, with the ovules from a plant with green leaves, so the female, and you want to know what the offspring are. Well, we know mitochondrial inheritance is going to follow the egg, ovules where the eggs are. And so since the egg was green leaf, we know that all the offspring will also have green leaves. So on this last part, it says explain how plants with the same genotype are able to differ in structure and the number of organelles in response to atmospheric levels of carbon dioxide. Um, and so that screamed to me phenotypic plasticity, so how the environment can cause a change in gene expression. Um, and so maybe having higher amounts of the amount of carbon dioxide is going to lead to certain genes being turned on, which then cause the increase in certain responses in that plant. I also put in a little part about maybe is binary fission um, because the mitochondrial is, you know, an endosymbiont. But honestly, I don't know, really know where they were going with this. AP Bob Payne was just says, bye y'all.